Nick Ferrari at Breakfast with Tom Swarbrick on LBC. Text 84850. Morning to you. Front page of this morning's I travel boost for families. Summer holidays now possible in Spain and France as government relaxes the rules. But as we've been hearing this morning, a degree of confusion and concern around some of these rule changes. Well, let's put that to Grant Shap. Secretary of State for Transport, Conservative MP for Well in Hatfield joins me live. Thank you for being there for us this morning, Secretary of State. Um, let me come straight on to some of the points that callers have, have been making this morning who are Brits but live abroad. Um, a caller earlier who wants to get to his daughter's wedding, hasn't got long left, has been triple jabbed by jabs that are recognised in this country, but will still have to quarantine. Why? Yeah, so the first thing we've done is to enable people who've been vaccinated here where they can show the status on the NHS app, that's the full NHS app as opposed to the COVID one, or dial 119 and mm -hmm. get a piece of paper. And from the 19th of July, we're saying that if you're coming back from an amberless country like France, for example, you would be able to uh, not have to quarantine and just simply take a day two test. Um, that's stage one. That's phase one. We do want to be able to recognise World Health Organisation, recognise um, jabs which have been provided um, elsewhere. And it's actually just a question of our uh, coming to agreements to be able to recognise uh, their version in Europe uh, called the Digital Pass um, in order to be able to do the same in return. So I'm hoping to be able to return pretty quickly to be able to do that. Easier from some places than others, because uh, in America, for example, there are 50 different systems, one for each state, and it's mm. largely paper based. So there are more complexities to that. Uh, how long Easier is for the EU. understood that? But how long is pretty quickly, particularly for Europe? Yeah, I don't have a date for you now, but okay. I'll, I'll come back and let you know as soon as I we, do. Are we talking uh, weeks? We're or working months? closely on it. Oh, weeks. Yeah. Weeks. Okay, so it could be within the next month or so. You've got some better news for those yes, families. Ab uh, yes, absolutely. And look, the, the, the total logic is on on the side of, uh, of that. I, I just thought that since we have already established that we can do this with the NHS app mm. uh, and we can integrate that into our systems for borders, uh, that we ought to get on with um, doing that now rather than and, and announce it now rather than keep people in suspense. Uh, I've got lots of questions from, from a variety of people who are in sort of very different situations that might not have a, a concrete answer yet. But let me just put to you Philip's position which is his girlfriend's in Canada she had her first jab here she got a second jab in Canada what does that mean for her ability to come back into the UK quarantine free yes I mean Canada is, is, is one of those countries where we've yet to get us a bilateral situate uh, uh, exchange in in place for recognizing each other's uh, COVID um, uh, certifications and that situation is a bit more complicated again because mm. as you say it's, it's one in, in each location um, one of the many issues that we're working through and it sort of slightly answers your first question as to why we're not able to instantly uh, recognize uh, people traveling in that sort of situation I should point out none of this is actually in place until the 19th of July yep. so yep. you have to be fully vaccinated plus wait two weeks because that's how long uh, you have to wait until they're fully uh, so they're fully sort of activated. So really even if even if the jabs in, in the countries that we've been talking about here are ones that are given in the UK, it's still going to take some time, isn't it? Is it for those jabs to be recognised, which feels very odd to people? Why can't you just go, yep, we're, we're jabbing with Moderna, you're jabbing with Moderna and you come? Yeah, no, I mean, look, you, you make a very good point. You understand that that wouldn't immediately appear in the um, NHS app for obvious reasons. Ah. Uh, and then there has to be another system in place, therefore, to uh, be able to acknowledge somebody's vaccinated status. It needs to be automatic. It needs to work with the passenger locator form. Border force would need to be able to recognise it. There are just complexities to work through to get to, to that situation. Uh, and it's you know one of the things we'll be working on next, having only just in the last day announced um, that we're, we're going to be able to accept amber list returnees without quarantine so i get the i get the nhs app and i can show that to show that i'm double jabbed who do i show it to at what stage of my travel do i show that before you get on the carrier usually the airline unless you're right. back from france where it could be the, the train or, or the ship uh and uh that means that you won't be able to board unless you can demonstrate that status and in order to accept that they'll look for the nhs app or people will be able to dial 119 and get a paper version so as of, well as showing the passport to the nice person before you get on the plane you show the app as well that says i've got two jabs yeah that's it you need to actually demonstrate that you've carried out a pre-departure test in the country you're coming from that you filled out a passenger locator form that you've booked your day two test uh, and if you're not going to be quarantining, uh, that you've uh, that you've been double jabbed and waited 
uh, two weeks. Now, that all sounds very complicated, but actually it will probably work uh, as you, it does for most people when they book in, when they yeah. check in, uh, they check in online and it will probably work online because that's how the carriers will uh, ask for the information. And you might say that this is the responsibility of the carriers rather than yours, but what stops people from doing what I'm afraid some people have been doing to get ra- past the, the checks at Wembley, which is screenshot someone's COVID app double jab status, share it around and have it on their phone to show people. Yes, you won't. Of course, you won't be able to do that because your passport has to link up with your uh, with, with you. So you you can't show somebody else's COVID um, status uh, and provide that information. Usually, uh, I know that British Airways and Virgin, for example, have said they're going to automate this as part of their check-in process. So po- probably you'll do it before you get to the to the airport. But you won't be able to upload incorrect information because it's matched against your passport. Let, let me ask about red list countries, given the changes that are coming to Amber and the double jab. Are Brits who who travel to red list countries going to have their hotel fees subsidised if they can't afford them? No, Brits shouldn't be travelling to red list countries. I should make very, very clear they're, they're red list for a reason. The only people who should be coming back from them uh, are uh, British or Irish citizens or people with permanent residence in the UK returning. Uh, so we shouldn't continue to see people uh, travel out to red list country. Uh, certainly not for for for, for holidays. But even, I mean, and, the lawyers have stepped in in this, as you know, Mr. Chap. The lawyers mm-hmm. have said that this is this is discriminatory. It is unfair on those people who might have very very good family reasons to go. It might be a you know dire crisis. They cannot afford to stay in the hotels. It would cripple them financially. So they need state support. They need that subsidised. You're saying well, that. The, well, well, well uh, look, I'm afraid we do have to do the things which protect the country from uh, importing potentially serious versions of the variants of the uh, virus, and we ask people not to go to those countries. When where they do and they come back and they hotel quarantine i have to tell you that overall the system's already being um subsidized uh and if anything um the system might w- w- you know may have to may have to look at the overall cost of the system we're not encouraging people to go to red list countries at all does that mean sorry does that mean that the price could go up for people who are having potentially yes right yeah and what we, we're not you know people People, uh, uh, you look, I'm, right. I'm, I'm simply saying, you know, you ask me, should it be subsidised? The answer is actually it's already subsidised. Uh, we do not want people to be travelling to red list countries uh, when, in fact, uh, the only people who should be coming here are people who already are there but are returning nationals, essentially. Uh, just a final one on this, because I realise you've spent an awful lot of time trying to get the system into place and it's obviously very complicated. But how long will quarantine exist for those who aren't jabbed, for those who either choose not to take it or can't? Well, so for the time being, um, we're, we're saying anyone who's been fully jabbed uh, won't need to quarantine from this amber list and you already didn't from green. You will st- still need to if you haven't had both vaccinations. Of course, uh, people are getting those very quickly. We've, we've done amazingly well as a country in terms of people becoming vaccinated. Actually, this is another call to people to go and get your vaccination. There'll be a subset of people who are either on clinical trials yep. or for whatever medical reason can't get vaccinated and of course those special categories uh, will made it a free uh, choice for, for people not to to take the jab they will say well I, i've been given a choice i don't want to take it and now you're you're creating a two-speed two-tier society by doing this well i'd say on behalf of everybody else who has had their jab if it's simply a, a matter of choice not to get it uh, that i'm afraid this is a price that you would need to pay you'd need to carry on quarantining and that's to protect everybody else there's no reason not to get this jab it protects people it protects yourself it protects other people's lives uh, as a society we have less vaccine hesitation hesitancy than any other country in the world and i think we should all be very proud of that just finally on this is it is it is it true, I see the reports, but is it true that the government is considering charging for lateral flow tests in the future? Well, currently the lateral flow tests remain um, free of charge. People are able to uh, take them a couple of times uh, a week. Um, I, I don't know uh, in the longer run uh, how that will uh, operate. That will be a decision mm. once we see where the, mm. the, the virus you is up You can see, to, though, so. how, how once people have to pay for a lateral flow test, that the idea of testing voluntarily goes out the window then, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's possible maybe that businesses um, might need to look after uh, that part of the cost. But I, I, so I'm, I'm, I don't have further information on that at this, at this time. Okay. And currently, people can get the lateral flow tests and they, they don't need to pay for them. Interesting. We'll watch that one. Just finally, I know you're going to obviously, I, sh- I assume you'll be watching the game on Sunday. I don't know from where you'll be watching it, but maybe you'll be able to get a ticket and get to the stadium. Who knows? Do we deserve a bank holiday? I know the prime minister is quite keen on giving us one. 
<laughs> well, so I'd be probably watching where I've re- watched most of the, the rest of the games in, in my local, uh, as, as the location we'll see. Uh, and uh, and I don't want to jinx this by getting into bank holidays and, and, and I just win the game first and then we'll worry about it. Thank you very much indeed for your time. Grant Shapps, you're the Secretary of State for Transport, your Conservative MP for Well in Hatfield. We'll come on to some of your thoughts about what you've heard there. Interesting charges for the hotels potentially going up. Maybe businesses asked to pay for lateral flow tests and all the uh, implications for those of you who choose not to be jabbed for on quarantine, how long you're going to be asked to quarantine for uh, on the basis that you've refused to take the vaccine. Come to your thoughts on that in a few moments. First on LBC, the eight o'clock news. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This is LBC. LBC.